Internet died. Re. Fun. I picked him at the time. Well, here, right? Are you kidding? Mm, I was off by a little bit. That's why I got it wrong. This game is so nitpicky. The culprit shot the victim from outside the storeroom. Continue. Mr. Winterbank died instantly from a bullet wound in his back. Looking at the stain of blood on the storeroom floor, it doesn't appear that the body was moved after death, which tells us that he was almost certainly shot while he was in the storeroom. However, the crucial point is where was the shooter when the fatal bullet was fired? So you're adamant that the shot was fired from outside the storeroom? Well, according to the Skulkin brothers' earlier testimony, I pulled me gun on him, and then he leaked it from that into the back room. If Mr. Windebank ran away from through the door, we have to assume that the door was open at the time. Not just that, but again, there is a peephole through the door. It was at precisely that moment when the victim was fleeing for his life that these brothers had the perfect opportunity to shoot the man in the back once he was inside the storeroom. Come to think of it, do you remember what the prosecutor said at the start of the trial? Moving on to the findings of Scotland Yard's coroner, his report states that the bullet entered the body on a rising diagonal trajectory. It means the victim was likely shot by someone significantly shorter in height than himself. 
poor man. Shot while he was running as fast as he could to safety. Of course. He would have been leaning forward as he was running away. So even if the bullet was fired horizontally, it would still have entered his body on an upward trajectory. So the culprit isn't necessarily someone shorter than Mr. Windebank. Objection! I'm sure my learned friend can't have forgotten that the storeroom door was found closed and locked from the inside. You claim the victim was shot as he fled into the room. Do you also claim this corpse was dexterous enough to turn the key in the lock? That is a mystery. What if someone else locked the door? Yes, there was someone else who could have locked the storeroom door. Is that so? Very well then, Council. Present your hypothe hypothesis to the court. In the scenario just described, the defense assertion is that the victim was shot from outside the storeroom. Re seal! Re! Re! <laughs> How was your raid? Or your stream? I'm stupid. The defense assertion is that the victim was shot from outside the storeroom. In which case, who shot and locked the storeroom door from the inside? Hmm. That is the question. I will hydrate. Unlock the storm door from the inside. from the inside. Could it have been Gina? Rising diagonal trajectory. Ah, uh, this is tricky. 
It can't have been him, because he died instantly because he was shot through the heart. I think it could have been Gina, because she could have tried to lock the door, but that doesn't explain why she was passed out with a gun in her hand. Silence! This whole trial's been a brain fart for me. It's actually really tricky. shot him. He died instantly. Someone had to have shut and locked the storeroom door from the inside. The only person who was on the inside. Is Gina. But that doesn't explain why she was knocked out. There is no other way in. It's only a one way entrance. It's the back of the storeroom. I'll try it. After saving again. Obviously, the person who locked the door was the only other person inside the storeroom at the time. The defendant, Miss Gina Lestrade. Objection! That's absurd. You're suggesting that the accused deliberately engineered the sealed room? For what possible reason? Uh, because they were under threat? Such actions would only serve to tighten the noose around her neck. I'm inclined to envy, I must say. Well, Council? <laughs> uh, yes, that's a tricky one, that, isn't it? <laughs> half baked notions have no place in my courtroom, Council. Remember that, please. But of course, Ginny would have locked the door. It almost goes without saying, doesn't it? It does? Well, if I was Ginny in that situation, I know I would have locked the door as quickly as I could. I mean, those two burglars had just fired a gun in her direction, hadn't they? Well, yes, obviously. Before the two brothers arrived, Miss Lestrade and Mr. Windebank were in the storeroom together. Now, I don't know what went on between them at that time, but at some point, Mr. Windebank must have heard the intruders breaking into his shop and left the storeroom. Intruders, eh? That's us, bruv. If your theory is correct, that would leave the accused alone in the storeroom. Yes, it would. Then, probably only moments later, the victim fled back into the storeroom door, hoping to escape danger. Hit in the back by the bullet, Mr. Winterbank fell to the floor where he was, just inside the storeroom. And what we have to ask ourselves now is, what would the defendant have done in that moment? I see where you're going with this. Outside the storm was a terrifying killer who had just murdered Mr. Winterbank. As soon as that thought struck Miss Lestrade, she slammed the door shut and locked it. 
in order to save her own life. But I, I mean, we aren't the ones who've done it. We aren't Gov, we ain't. You've gotta believe us. I mean, come on, we'd never shoot no one. That's blatantly untrue. I know for a fact that you would. Because before my own eyes, you shot Mr. Erlock Scholz. There's only one logical conclusion here. Mr. and Mr. Skulkin, you brothers had every opportunity to have been the true perpetrators of Mr. Windebank's murder. That was amazing, Runo. All the members of the jury seem to be firmly on your side now. I know, first time ever, and probably the last. Well, I think you've done it. Surely they'll have to give a verdict or not. An admirable effort, my learned friend. What's this now? He's laughing? You find the situation amusing, Lord Von Zeeks? I find... I myself find the defense's argument most persuasive. I dare say... Such... Chisanery is the bread and butter of the street performers in your provincial... <laughs> provincial Eastern nation. But such blatantly malicious conjuring tricks amount to nothing more than inexcusable pedophagery here. What? The hypothesis you put forward so ostensibly, credibly, cannot and will not stand. Because, you see, it contains a fatal flaw. A fatal flaw? Do you mean to tell me that you're unaware of your logic's failing? Let's see, Lord Von Zeeks. Might be an idea to explain this bally conjuring trick or whatever it is to the troops on the ground, hmm? The fatal flaw in my learned friend's argument is really very simple to understand. <laughs> Assuming you're not too dim-witted to count bullets. By George, count bullets? Oh dear. He noticed them. What's everyone talking about? Council. Yes, sir? Tell the court how many bullets were found at the scene of the crime. Um, two? Two bullets? Correct. The first, that which hit the victim in the back, ending his life. And the second, that which struck the detective, Mr. Erlock Sholmes, on his arrival at the scene. Committing lawyer. <laughs> Yeah, see what ended stream. Indeed. The defense presented a picture showing the damage caused by the second bullet earlier in the proceedings. The bullet which injured Mr. Sholmes appears to have passed through his body to strike the calendar. <laughs> Your lordship's understanding is correct. Furthermore, we know there are two firearms involved in the incident. A revolver belonging to the victim, Mr. Windebank, and the Skulkin Brothers' revolver. Mm. The evidence shows that a single bullet was fired from each gun, and Mr. Windebank's revolver can only hold one bullet. Or. Usually it only holds one bullet, at the very least. Well... The Skulkin Brothers' revolver holds six. Yes, indeed it does. A single bullet from each. Now then, I learned friend. 
You yourself told the court only moments ago that these two brothers shot Mr. Erlock Sholmes right before your eyes. Yes, I did. Oh my goodness, I think you'll find that if the single bullet that was fired from the brothers gun hit Mr. Sholmes, it means and to make not shot by same gun. Stop. Only one bullet. Stop. <laughs> Give me pizza rolls, Skyler. Or perish. Exactly. Yes, this Nipponese street performer presented an ostensibly credible argument. However, it was never anything more than a diversionary trick with no hope of standing up to scrutiny. Hilarious every single time he does that. Pray forgive the discourtesy of flinging the drags of this hollow nectar into the public gallery into someone's head, thus probably committing murder, or at the very least an injury. Lord Von Seeks. But this court needs to open its eyes. The accused Miss Gina Lestrade is no ordinary little girl. <laughs> I don't know. He sure seems to, ha seems to have a habit of it. Despite her young years, she can regrettably no longer be described as a juvenile. No, the person in the dock is far from a law-abiding citizen. She has a past riddled with criminal conduct. The truth is, the accused broke into the pawnbrokery on the night in question with loathsome intent. As we can see beyond doubt in this print which depicts her threatening the victim with a murder weapon. And I have here in my possession one more piece of evidence that the prosecution wishes to present. That disc. I'll be taking that whatever it is of McGilded's down to the yard. Thank you very much. Him, <laughs> Angie. Alright, go get food. No, don't. Don't give it to him. It's mine, that is. Mine. I'm sorry, miss. But anything belonging to McGilded has to be taken in as evidence now. Yes, the music box disc. Gilded's music box disc. The very day before the hateful murder of Mr. Windebank, the accused attempted to make off with this article, which clearly doesn't belong to her. And with none of the subtlety of a pickpocket, I might add. But by brute force and brazen impudence. Make no mistake, any sympathy for the accused on account of her years is misguided and dangerous. There are no depths to which this girl would not stoop if approached, no crime she would not commit. The court forgets that fact at its peril. I think it would be prudent to take this music box disc into evidence, counsel. As a grim testament to the... Yeah? Um, Lord Von Seeks, I, um... Inspector Gregson? What? Yes, Inspector? <laughs> we had a meeting yesterday at the yard with the prosecution service, and, um... I think it was agreed that the disc wouldn't be used as evidence. What's this all about? Why is the Inspector acting strangely? That's the first time he said anything to Von Zeeks at all. I am unaware of any such meeting. But but those were the instructions right from the top. The government bigwigs were insistent. 
Inspector, I am a prosecutor and I alone determine how to present my case. Your warning is noted. Thank you. The prosecution wishes to proceed with submitting, submitting this disc as evidence, my lord. Indeed. Bailiff. The prosecution has established the accused's motive, opportunity, and baseness of character. There is nothing more to add. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I await your informed decisions and rest my case. I don't believe it. I had the jury on my side for once, for all of five minutes. Oh dear, it wasn't even for five minutes, you know. My lord, I wonder if I might say something at this point? Proceed, Mr. Foreman. I've been stumbling about in a bit of a fog up to now, if truth be told, but all of a sudden... The answer is probably obvious to me and my men. There's only one thing for it. Oh no. Very well. The court will hear from the jury. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll present your leanings, leanings as to the defendant's culpability. Guilty. 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 Of course. It would not be that easy, would it? We have a consensus among the jury, it seems. When you have eliminated the impossible, whatever remains must be the truth. That's my line. I wrote that for Hurley. How dare you use it against us? Don't worry, Iris. I don't think we're finished yet. There's still more to this case than we realize. There must be, because there's one thing that I'm absolutely certain of. Gina didn't shoot Mr. Windebank. That's beyond any doubt. Alright, X-Men. Sleep well. Very well. We will proceed with a second summation examination of the day. Mr. Foreman, are you and the other jurors ready? Garadab Squadron is primed and ready for action, sir. Very good. So, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, we will each explain on what grounds you have now determined the defendant to be guilty. Once a rogue, always a rogue, I say. Hmm? Different breed to us law abiding citizens. As only two bullets were found at the scene, I would say the whole case is done and dusted. You don't need a stereoscope to see the truth here. Every which way you look at it, it was the pickpocket. Hmm, I never imagined that simple operation would cause me such grief. The accused attempted a theft on the previous day. You can see I'm in for the busy day ahead. I'm ballistics expert. I've seen many shootings. There is nothing I do not know about guns. It would seem there is little remaining room for doubt. I have to admit, I was rather bowled over by the argument put forward by the chap in black. But when that fell apart like a house of cards, I saw that I'd jolly well had been hoodwinked. Well, no more. The whole courtroom is turning against me. It's not fair. Iris? That prosecutor is being mean. Just because Ginny's done something she shouldn't have done in the past, it doesn't make her a murderer. Allow me to save this foody vintage while I savor the spectacle of your fruitless debate on the matter. Just to the truth coming out, Eventually. That's enough preamble. 
Council, proceed with the summation examination. <laughs> yes, my lord. Just because my sister has a history of pickpocketing, she must be guilty of murder. Is that what you're saying? Ah, well... Are all members of the British Army so quick to judge? I beg your pardon? Are you mocking Her Majesty's Armed Forces, the greatest military organization in the world? No, I'm simply illustrating my point. Making assumptions about people because they're a soldier or a pickpocket is wrong and dangerous. Well, yes, might have a point there, I suppose. But let's not forget the girl had already shown she had it in her from before. She's clearly a criminal sort through and through, can't deny it. When you say that she'd shown she had it in her, are you referring to this? Exactly. I tried to swipe that only a day earlier, hmm? Or am I mistaken? Not exactly. Given that I was actually there at the time, it's hard to refute that. I've never actually seen the real thing. I can't wait to have a closer look at it. <laughs> scoot, scoot. <laughs> Just the fuck out of the fish in Jeff and Julius. <laughs> Oh yes, of course. Mr. Sholmes did use his caramel bars to make a copy of the disc, didn't he? And then ordered every type of music box he could find from across Europe. We still don't know what Tuna plays though, do we? But I'd love to see how the original compares to Hurley's copy. The Gilded's Disc. Could it be a clue somehow? Perhaps we should examine it in more detail. Okay. Oh, Runa, look. This is blood. Yes, you're right. Just a small smear, but definitely blood. She can use her invention to determine what color it will show. Actually, I feel as though I might have noticed that before. And it's my time to shine again. I thought I'd be waiting forever. Alright, hold still with that disc, Reno. Can we get this done quickly, Iris? In a flash. Green. A lovely bright shade again. Wait, that color? What is it? It's just... not green, it... It's not the first time we've seen that color, is it? No, it's not. You've seen green here, too, supposedly from Erlok Sholmes. And now here, too. Why is everyone dancing? <laughs> this is a courtroom. You're not supposed to dance in a courtroom. It's the number of bullets that has you convinced. Only two bullets were fired, and the two guns that fired them have been examined by the police. 
When my parlor maid asks me how many are invited invited for dinner, I always tell her to come with the table settings. <laughs> Why are you all dancing? <laughs> well, that's logical, I suppose. Although, yes. Sometimes after dining, crockery does go missing. One or two guests rather like to find china. <laughs> the music is a vibe. I love this game's soundtrack. Does your employer dine with thieves? So I suppose... If there was another bullet, somewhere of which we were unaware... I'd have to reconsider my position. Third bullet somewhere on the scene? Could that be possible? Is it possible? One bullet... Two bullet... There are only two guns that we know of. One in which have one shot fired each. We can't outright say... ...anything yet. Unfortunately, only two bullets were discovered by the police during their investigation. Yes, I know. Right. And I don't imagine the good men of Scotland Yard would have overlooked anything. I missed a bullet while I was cleaning his lordship's office. Well, I should receive a sound scolding, I don't doubt. And you should receive a visit from the police, perhaps. It sounds like a crime scene to me. A third bullet. It would completely turn things around if there was one, wouldn't it? Do you think we might find one lying around somewhere? If I've understood correctly, you need two pictures, a left one and a slightly different right eye one. Exactly. Then you can see the scene in three dimensions, like this. So if we have two bullets, I don't suppose you can see anything useful with them? Hmm, I think you'll find that no matter how much you squint, the truth of the situation always looks the same here. The only person who could have shot the victim is that girl in the dock. How can you be so sure of that? Think about it. The Skulkin brothers shot the great detective, didn't they? Yes, that's been mentioned once or twice. Well then, surely it's coming into focus now, isn't it? This is a waste of time. I'm not going to change this man's mind anytime soon. Would you please stop muttering about things that have nothing to do with this trial, sir? The defendant's life is on the line here. Well, the thing is... I couldn't really say that it is nothing to do with this trial, to be honest. Huh? I mean, there's no question that the man was shot, but the bullet had simply vanished from his stomach. Quite inexplicable, don't you think? I almost don't want to ask, but the surgery you've been muttering about all this time. You were operating on Mr. Erlock Sholmes. Herlick! Herlock! Herlock!
Sherlock Holmes by any chance. So I was right. I was right. It was that Hairlock fellow. That changes things around. You're the searcher that operated on Mr. Sholmes? That's right, using the very latest anesthetic techniques, I might add. It was a fairly major op, I can tell you. This is crazy. Let me see, the fellow was brought in not long after midnight, if I remember correctly. I said he'd been shot by some criminal or other, so I opened him up like a shop. But the funny thing is, I went over his insides with a fine tooth comb and couldn't find the bullet anywhere. So I'm afraid I had to throw up my hands and just stitch the fellow back up. I hate to state the obvious, but... Yes? Surely that's because the bullet is still at the scene of the shooting. The counsel for the defense is correct. As is clearly shown in this photographic print, the bullet that the Skulkin brothers fired at Mr. Sholmes hit him in the stomach region, then exited his body and launched into the shop wall where the counter was hanging by the door. I think you'll find it's really quite simple if you just consider the problem three-dimensionally. <laughs> Who do you think I am, son? <laughs> um, well, your number four is about the best I can do. As soon as I saw the wind to the man's stomach, I flipped him over. Like a pancake? <laughs> Are you saying that you checked his back? Of course I did. And there wasn't a trace of injury. No sign that the... I'm sorry, what? As soon as I saw the wind to the man's stomach, I flipped him over. There wasn't a trace of injury, no sign that the bullet had left the body at all. So there was three bullets. While there's still no explanation as to why there were only two guns with one shot fired from each, there is a bullet here. A bullet here. And apparently there's still a bullet inside Mr. Sholm's injury. What? That's the point. The only logical conclusion was that the bullet was still somewhere in the man's innards. Which is exactly why I said about slicing him up. And I'm still none the wiser even now. How many times do I have to say it? Can somebody please explain how it happened? Can somebody please solve the mystery? It's almost as much of a mystery as to how this jury was put together. <laughs> <laughs> the mystery of where that bullet ended up is infuriating. Where's an expert when you need one? Is that not contradictory in some way? I'm going to scream. Hold it! What do you mean you're in for a busy day? got to say stop do excuse me stop how about you stop talking like you're <laughs> oh, on. i am a communications officer stop communications officer does that have to do with sending telegrams 
Everything from personal messages written by members of the public to the latest news in the capital. I convert all the messages into Morse code and tap it out to the entire world electronically. To the entire world? Thousands of miles of cable under the sea. Stop. Worldwide communication network. Stop. Information transmitted to and from all corners of globe. Stop. Ah, yes. She was getting equally worked up about radio waves or the like before, wasn't she? I specialize in communicating information from government departments and newspaper offices. I see. I'm sure I shall have to wire the newspaper reports of today's guilty verdict later. So no sleep for me tonight, I imagine. Let's just finish the trial first, shall we? Hold it! I thought you were just a tourist. Good day. I am visiting London for sightseeing. I would like to take bus to Crystal Tower, please. There's no way he's just a wizarding tourist. So, you're a ballistics e expert? Who knew? I have much experience with guns. Ah. I have lived through many, how do you say? Um. Extreme. Um. Violent. Bath of. Um, no. Blood of. Mm. Extreme violent bloodbaths, perhaps? Da, those. Extreme violent bloodbaths. English is very difficult tongue. Considering the sort of people you associate with, I'm surprised you still have the tongue. Anyway, if you have questions about bullets and guns, you ask me. There is nothing I do not know. A mystery I cannot solve. He's very confident in his knowledge of guns, that's for sure. But if possible, please, only in Russian tongue. Language. He's not very confident in his knowledge of English, though, is he? No, still, we should bear it in mind. He's a man if there's a mystery about guns or bullets. Von Seeks has managed to convince everyone. When you have eliminated the impossible, he said, but he hasn't. If we're going to fight back, we need more material. And we have to fight back. We have to turn this trial around again. Two statements clearly contradict the idea that all I do is pictures against each other. <laughs> A ballistics expert? Pitting P I T T. On the night in question, Mr. Sholmes was shot by one of the Skulkin brothers. But since there was no sign of an exit wound on his back, we must assume the bullet didn't pass through him. However, no bullet was found lodged in Mr. Sholmes' body, either. Furthermore, a bullet was found lodged in the wall of the shop where Mr. Sholmes was shot. Juror number six. Hello, my name is Bilen. Pleased to meet you. This apparent contradiction in the facts is, that is so clearly troubling juror number four. Are you able to explain the mystery? I have seen a very similar situation in Motherland. It was night. There was a blizzard. I was running away along a mountain road in freezing cold. Snow was piling high on both sides of road. It was very narrow and dangerous. Why are you? Uh, 
You're all weird. My pursuers had hunting rifles and they were on dog sleds. Mental note, don't ask too many questions. I was shot from behind and I fell down in the snow. Hi, Kata. Oh my god, my chat is in a what's up frenzy. And the situation was very similar to what I hear today from the doctor. They could not find bullet in my body. And no sign of, how do you say, exit wound. Then, then where did the bullet go? Bullet never hit me. Well, if it never hit you, why did you fall down? Bullet hit frozen wall of ice very close to my side. What? One similar piece. Very sharp, broke away from lump of ice and pierced my body. It made deep wound that looks just like bullet wound. Good gracious. Of course, piece of ice quickly melted inside me. And that is solution to mystery of disappearing bullet. But that doesn't answer the question at all. The shooting happened in a pawnbroker's shop. Not some snowy mountain road in another country. Just an idea, but we might not be looking at exactly the same scenario here. Runa, where exactly was Hurley shot again? According to the report, in his stomach. Sort of around this area, I think. Well, that's precisely where he always wears a little pouch on his belt. A pouch? Actually, I might have noticed something like that. Yes, a pouch. It's where he keeps three glass vials of very dangerous chemicals that he uses in his investigation. What? Really? Very true, Dungeon. But this is a old man. Doctor, where's the pouch Mr. Sholmes was wearing? Hmm, well... The fellow had nothing like that on his person when he arrived at the hospital as far as I remember. I may. Lord von Zeeks? While I realize it is forbidden for the prosecution to interject during a summation examination, I should inform the defense that I have the pouch in question in the antechamber outside the courtroom. Sorry. As I understand it, when the police arrived on the scene and found Mr. Sholmes injured, they removed the pouch in order to assess the wound. Thank goodness. I thought I was getting forgetful for a moment. Since then, it has been in my safekeeping along with all other evidence relating to the case. I can personally vouch for the fact that it has not been touched since the incident occurred. Very well. I'll look extremely unconven unconventional during a summation examination. I must demand the prosecution present the item in question with all speed. Hmm, I see. So this is the pouch worn by Mr. Sholmes on the night in question, is it? Look at that. One of the files is broken and the leather around it is scorched black. It's almost as if the file exploded. Exploded. So, that night, the bullet from the Skulkin Brothers' gun struck Mr. Sholmes' pouch. And it was the glass file exploding that caused the fellow's injury. This bullet did not penetrate victim, but was deflected into wall of shop. Delightfully complex aroma.
Well, it would appear one mystery has been solved at least. Yeah, it's supposed to be the prosecution's duty to provide evidence from the very beginning. One thing I will say the Ace Attorney games tend to do is have the prosecution hold evidence. Though it has no bearing on the truth of this case. The bungling and burgling brothers shot the detective and the accused shot the pawnbroker. The pertinent facts of the case remain unaltered. But at least the mystery is solved. I can sleep easy tonight. Thank you, young man. Da, thank you very much. Thought I could help. Due to its bearing on the conundrum just solved, the court went sequester this scruffy pouch as evidence. Well, this pouch isn't scruffy. <laughs> Now, the summation examination. It would appear that the defense is somewhat struggling to alter opinion, hmm? Please, my lord, a little more time. After all, that's a new piece of evidence. It could be a valuable clue, and you can't afford to overlook anything here, Rinosuke. Just so ha there's still a way to turn this around somehow, I'm sure of it. It's been smashed to pieces. Presumably this is where the bullet struck. As soon as the bullet hit the chemical in that file, there would have been a really big explosion. A big explosion? Or well, Hurley's potions and chemicals are amazingly useful for the investigation work he does. But they're also quite tricky to handle. Safely at least. They're very dangerous. Oh. I'm sure that when this file broke, the chemical inside would have ignited. Not to self. Always walk on the right hand side of Sholm's in future. The left is the danger zone. <laughs> oh look, there's a hole here at the back. It doesn't look much like a bullet hole, but clearly something ripped through the leather with great force. Something must have pierced it somehow to have left this hole behind. Yes, it looks that way. Mr. Sholm's in his pouch both took a beating, didn't they? These glass files are full of Hurley's homemade potions. Homemade? Yes, like pink powder to show up where people have touched things. And scent amplifying solution to intensify a smell lingering on an object. That's amazing. They're all very easy to use, there's just one thing that you have to be careful of. They're all very flammable. Mr. Sholmes is a walking bomb. Either he's passionate about finding out the truth, or just oblivious to the dangers. Oh, right. At least 1850. So, we have a new statement. Hold it! I want to press him further. Can I ask you to reconsider your leaning, sir? 
Oh no, that's another matter entirely. Sorry? All I can think about for the moment is this wonderful sense of relief I have for the mystery is solved. I need some time to let that sink in before I could possibly consider anything else. Alright, I thought surgeons had to be able to think quickly. Perhaps we should leave him alone for now while he savors his inner peace. We focus on some of the other jurors? I suppose we'll have to. I wish I had the chance to experience inner peace sometimes. The thing that has me confused is... There's no bullet hole, although this hole kind of looks like it. Maybe I should examine it. It's really scorched badly just here. Oh, the strap is broken, look. This must be where the bullet hit them. Let me see. Aha! There's the third bullet. What the iris, look. Behind where the broken file was, do you see it? Skulkin Brothers bullet. What a stroke of luck that it hit this pouch. This is an amazing discovery. What this means is, there were three bullets fired at Windbanks that night. We found exactly what that juror was talking about. The third bullet. It's time to press that juror again, I think. This is the bullet that was fired from the Skoken Brothers gun on the night of the incident. Yes, so it turns out it never actually entered Hurley's body at all. Thanks to the thick leather of that pouch he was wearing, it saved him. Yeah, it stopped it because it's leather. Hurley's always lucky like that. Well, considering what he had to go through in the hospital, I wonder how lucky he really was. Oh dear, poor Hurley. Hold it! Allow me to show you then, third bullet. Take that! Here it is. We discovered it just now. Yes, on that item in question, Windebank's pawnbrokery, another bullet was fired. Hold it! Shut the fuck up! You can't speak during a summation examination, bitch! What is this new trickery, Nipponese conjurer? Where did you find that bullet? It was lodged inside Mr. Shulman's pouch. This pouch was removed from around Mr. Shulman's waist before he was taken to the hospital. And since then, it has been touched by no one. Do you mean to say the shot fired by the Skulkin brothers that night? 
Yes. As your lordship has surmised, it hits this pouch. But that makes no sense whatsoever. You already know the whereabouts of the bullet fired at Mr. Sholmes. It's clearly visible in this photographic print. Two guns from the scene have already been submitted into the court record as evidence. Yes, that of Mr. Windebank and that belonging to the Skulkin brothers. An examination of both guns revealed that only a single bullet had been fired from each. But that must mean... That's right. We now know that on the night in question, three bullets were fired. However, only two bullets were fired from the guns recovered from the crime scene. And until that incontrovertible inconsistency is somehow explained, we cannot and must not pass judgment. While this summation and examination remains incomplete, the court has been presented with new facts. Facts that would appear to shake the very foundations upon which the case against the defendant has been built. As is my prerogative in this situation, I hereby temporarily suspend the summation examination. So he is stepping in to stop it. He himself is not going to allow the trial to end like this. Relive. Bring the witnesses back to the stand at once. Witnesses? Governor? Were you listening to proceedings while the defense carried out the summation examination? We was, Governor. We was. Perhaps we can dispense with the tedious preamble. Simple, simply answer this one question. Third bullet has been identified at the scene of the crime. What do you make of that? Make of it, Gov? I don't make nothing of nothing. Is it one of yours? Yeah, he is. In that case, did you have an accomplice? What? Hey, what? Never. The Skulkin brothers work alone. It's just the two of us. That's our trademark. Yet you've continuously tried to drag him into your scheme. How soon we forget? How soon we forget poor Sulky? <laughs> Only two of the bullets from the crime scene originated from the firearms we have in evidence. The third bullet was fired from another gun. Where is it? Lumi, that's an head scratcher. Relatable, Kata. Counsel for the defense. Yes. I should like to hear your thoughts regarding these new developments. The third bullet and the mysterious missing firearm from whence it came. Thinking back over all the testimony we've heard and all the evidence we've seen, I think I'm starting to form a picture, a picture of what really happened to that night. My lord, I think it's clear what this third bullet tells us about the Skulkin brothers. I think there's another accomplice. But that's not what this question is asking. 
It's asking about the third bullet, to which we know there has to be another gun. On that night at Windybank's pawn pokery, brothers must have been in possession of another gun. We know that only one bullet was fired from each of the two firearms already in the court record. A logical conclusion, therefore, is that the brothers were working with an accomplice, an accomplice who was carrying a gun. Oh, so I guess I could have answered with whatever. An accomplice, you say? Pigswell. These protracted proceedings have already forced us to endure two summation examinations. Yet in all that time, there has been not a murmur of a third man. If this apparently wraith-like wraith being exists, the court must be shown hard evidence. Without it, this fantasy will be crushed. The prosecution demands answers on two counts. Oh god. Firstly, proof, evidence, that this accomplice was ever at the scene of the crime. And secondly, the identity of this spurious character. The Skulkins are lying, I know that. But, how can I ascertain the identity of the person they're hiding? Well, counsel? I'm supposed to prove the existence of this accomplice, and reveal the person's identity, even... In response to the prosecution's demands, my lord, the defense is... Is my chat weird? The thing is, I have my suspicions on who it is. But I don't know how to prove it. to present answers. The defense is ready. I believe I can provide all the answers the prosecution demands. So, my Nipponese friend, despite the swimming eyes, you seem to think you have something to say. This promises to be interesting. I have to push forward now. There's no other option. I need to use every single piece of evidence available to me if it will make a difference. In that case, Counsel, I would ask you to present the evidence without delay. On the night in question, in the moments leading up to the death of the victim, what proof have you that there was a third intruder present at the scene? Why is chat shaking? Based off of everything that I know, I feel like... This is the closest thing we've got. Uh... 
I hope I'm right. Take that! The evidence is this. Why is chat shaking? You're all weird. Why are you shaking? Stop scaring me. <laughs> uh, what happens if we are unable to present answers? Do we go to our panel for? The defense is... Unable to complete a sentence, it would seem. Much less provide any credible answers here. Yes, it would appear so. Very well. Let's try it. Again. Wait. Please. Good gracious, Council. I have to keep the momentum going here. I can't give up now. This is just like scientific research, if you ask me. Sorry. When you start doubting yourself and thinking you can't possibly work something out, you become blind. Even though in truth, the answer you're looking for is right there in front of you. The answer is right there in front of me? My lord. Actually, the defense would like to present answers to the questions posted, posed by the prosecution. So, my Nipponese friend, despite the swimming eyes, you seem to think you have something to say. Your earlier tongue tied to spit. Proof have you that there was a third intruder? I mean, is it? Is it going to be this blatantly obvious? Iris did say that the answer is right in front of us. not the answer. I'm gonna scream. <laughs> the proof have you that there was a third intruder present at the scene.
Okay, let's think about this. We know Mr. Sholmes was shot with a bullet. And we know... Windebanks was shot with a bullet. The evidence is right here, in this portfolio. Wait, Joe, of that portfolio again, is it? Do you expect the court to rifle through your papers itself? Be more specific. You claim one of those blood samples proves that it presents this third intruder. Well, which one is it? here. There appears to be some green paint or such like around the bullet hole in the middle of the calendar. That's a bloodstain, my lord. A bloodstain? Green blood? Curious, even for you. Is the court to understand that the intruder was some unhuman creature? It's something developed by Mr. Erlock Sholmes. By the great detective. New invention. Stop. Not yet appeared in stories. Stop. It's this, you see. It doesn't have a name yet, though. This flocker sprays a chemical that reacts with the different elements in people's blood to change its color. Different elements of people's blood? Yes. Everyone's blood is slightly different, you see. Because it's made up of different elements. So by seeing what color it changes to, you can tell enough flash whose blood it is. Oh, that brings a whole extra dimension to looking at blood. Fuck of blood in courtroom. Stop. Very exciting. <laughs> Stop. As an example, this one shows the blood of the victim, Mr. Windebank. Ah, a striking blue. Yes, so you see, the green color of this bloodstain on the calendar shows that somebody else was shot in the main part of the shop. Now hold fire there, young man. It could be from some unrelated incident, couldn't it? No, it's not unrelated. The date shown on the calendar is the date on which Mr. Windebank was killed. Therefore, we can assume that whoever was shot was shot on the same day. Then whose blood is it? Well, the Skulkin brothers on the stand don't appear to be suffering from any gunshot injuries. Which means it must be the blood of somebody else. The third intruder, in fact. Objection! 
whose identity the court is still waiting to hear. You can't delay this any longer, my learned friend. Who is this alleged third intruder? I have my suspicions. Take that! There can be no doubt. This is the shadowy accomplice the brothers have been trying so hard to protect. Objection! The lottery? Is that how you decide who's guilty? In that case, the name of Yunusuke should be added to the draw for being guilty of incompetence. God damn it. Stop. Double inputting. Hey, you want to know what would be funny? Take that! Objection! Dang. I thought that would be funny to do. Yeah, there was green. Actually... Take that! The man's name is Egbert Benedict. Egbert Benedict? Who on earth are you talking about, Council? He paid a visit to Winterbank's pawnbrookery on the afternoon before the incident took place. And the accused attempted to deceive the pawnbroker into releasing this article into her possession. No, you didn't help. I just remembered that this person had no place in the case beforehand, with the exception of arriving the day before the incident. But yeah, there's green on the... Kind of didn't help. But yeah, there's green on the records. The man identified by the defense, Mr. Egert Benedict. Then attempted to take the article from the defendant by force. I believe this filthy pocket thief has just redeemed an article from you, no? Yes, yes. The article in question belongs to me. I demand for it to be returned at once. Kata didn't help! Shut up! <laughs> Don't give Kata credit for what I did. <laughs> Alright, Kata, have a good time. Now that's a lie. What are you trying to pull? Give me back my overcoat, you wastrel. Wastrel. Needless to say. Any music box discs, too. <laughs> Thank me for coming up with the idea, Re. I'm the person playing the game. <laughs> Inspector Gregson was there at the time and can attest what happened. In the end, it was the inspector himself who took the disc. Can you corroborate this account, Inspector? Um, yes, my lord. That's more or less what happened. And in the interest of being thorough, I asked Wendy Bank for Prince Sean the Fellow. Taken from one of his red handed recorder. Governances. Yes, that's him talking to Mr. Winterbank that morning. 
And you claim this man as the brother's accomplice? Well, Mr. and Mr. Skulkin? Never seen the geezer before in me life. On me life, Gov. On me life. Never seen them. Well, somewhat unsurprisingly, it appears our witnesses disagree with that assertion. I'm sure your lordship recalls my learned Nipponese friend's actual assertion. Which was that he could prove the identity of the alleged accomplice. Yes, and I can. Then show us the evidence. I agree. We must see proof that the clean-cut gentleman in the photograph is the filthy criminal you say he is. I can. Because I think I know the identity of the green blood now. The green blood belongs to... Him. Because... None of you were... On that stream. But... Because Gina actually pushed him when she was pushed, pushed as in like, you know, she tried to run off, um, he was actually nicked by this. That's his blood. Oh, also, I will hydrate Vex, hun. I will also hydrate. I went into a slump with the start of this trial, but I'm actually starting to pick up. This is the last piece of evidence. I've had a feeling that something has been missing in this trial from the very start. But now, I'm going to drag it kicking and screaming into the courtroom. Are you ready to present your answer to the court then, counsel? Yes, my lord. The defense will present the evidence now. Proof that the man pictured in this photographic print was in fact that person struck by the third bullet. As I mentioned before, on the afternoon of the day in question, the defendant attempted, deceitfully, admittedly, to reclaim this disc from Windebanks. Alright, uh, alright, Fenrir. Which is when the aforementioned Igert Benedict appeared on the scene, I believe. This man then attempted to purloin the article from the defendant's possession, no? That's correct, my lord. I myself was present at the time. It was following this that a minor incident occurred. But of course, sir, here's a disc for you. Very well. And I shall bid you farewell. Say goodbye to style. Wait a minute, that disc is mine. What do you think you're doing, you little tramp? You've you've drawn blood, you filthy animal. Being a music box disc, it has countless small but sharp metal protrusions over its surface. Those protrusions cause Mr. Benedict's finger to bleed. But the resulting smear of blood is still visible on the disc now. A blood stain, is it? My assistant and I have just analyzed bloodstain here in this very courtroom. Using a trusty fog of gun. Yes, and we added the results to this portfolio.
That evidence is conclusive. The man calling himself Mr. Egert Benedict, who was in Winterbanks earlier in the day, is the accomplice who was present at the scene of the crime that same night. My lord, it is the opinion of the defense that Mr. Edward Benedict should be summoned to the courtroom to testify. It would certainly seem that we can ill afford to ignore this gentleman's apparent presence. Objection! This has gone on long enough now. This flagrant ignorance of the mechanics of law. Sherlock Holmes, you say? Yes, I've heard the name. The protagonist in a series of short stories for the vulgar classes, the god of detection or some such. And now you employ chemical substances devised by this fantastical persona in the highest court in the land? Do you expect us to take you seriously? Samples made by this plaything are not fit to be called evidence. So the bloodstain turned a shade of green. What of it? Here's to you successfully proving that no other blood in the world would turn the same color. That is a fair point. And pray, do not even think of suggesting that we should take Mr. Shulman's word for it. I knew it would come to this. Of course Mr. Shum's invention isn't going to be recognized by any official body. But what other choice did I have? I'm just remembering what Father Christmas over there said before. About he was temporarily suspending the summation examination. In other words... The examination isn't over yet, is it? Good grief. What did you just say, young girl? And in a summation examination, the decision as to whether or not the trial continues is in the hands of the six jurors, isn't it? So the way I see it, it doesn't matter what certain other people think of Hurley's invention. At least, not for now. Yes, she's right. Young lady, you have quite the devi devious mind. It really just comes down to one thing. Whether these ladies and gentlemen of the jury are convinced by what you say, Runo. Is that about right, would you say? Or did I misunderstand something? Unbelievable. Mr. Shulman's partner is a force to be reckoned with. <laughs> Iris Wilson, sharpshooter. After that shoot precess of the situation from an entirely unexpected source, it must be acknowledged that the previous summation examination has yet to reach its conclusion. This is absurd. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, the court now looks to you for your final leanings in this matter. As proud citizens of Her Majesty's Britain, I'm sure you will come to fair and just conclusions. So then, state your final decisions in turn, please. Not guilty. Not guilty. Not guilty. 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 Hmm. Not guilty. This time we don't have a full-blown guilty, not guilty verdict. There's a mix. Interesting. Two call guilty, guilty, and four call not guilty. Such as the outcome of the summation examination. Objection! My lord, with all due respect, this is an outrage. The prosecution refuses to accept this decision. On what grounds? These jurors are persuaded by some half-baked concoction devised by a pretender to real, real police work. 
then they are too ignorant to be trusted with the judgment of anyone's guilt. I'm sorry, Lord Von Zeeks, but the outcome of the summation examination cannot be ignored. This trial will continue. Nevertheless, we find ourselves in a rather awkward situation. The defense has very reasonably requested the subpoena of a new witness. But sadly, I fear that will be impossible. What? The name ge the gentleman gave for himself, Egert Benedict, is quite clearly false. I don't believe it. Just when I've managed to prove the man was there that night. Um, could... could I say something? Who was that, please? Who spoke? Um, it was me, my lord. Juror number five? What have you to say, madam? If possible, Inspector... Eh? Me, ma'am? I wonder if you might show the photographic print to me again. The one in which the gentleman is shown. Alright, yes. This one you mean? Of Mr. Benedict? Yes. There's no doubt in my mind. Juror number five? You don't mean to say... You know this man? Yes, I know him. What? Interesting development. Chair number five, how on earth? I am a communications officer. Stop. As we can clearly see, the gentleman in the photograph is... Stop. Also a communications officer. Stop. He works in my office. Stop. Hmm. A very talented operator, in fact. Stop. You should be in the communication station now. Stop. Tapping away on this telegraph. Stop. This doesn't seem right somehow. I can't put my finger on why, but it doesn't feel right. I suppose we all imagined the accomplice would be some sort of hardened criminal. It's a bit unexpected to find out that he has a respectable job by day whenever he gets up to at night. Yes, I suppose that's it. I suppose that's why I felt something was wrong. The gentleman is at London's communication station. We should be able to subpoena him within the hour. Lord von Zeeks, if you please. Yes, my lord. Make the necessary arrangements with all haste. As your lordship bids. The court will recess for one hour. When the new witness arrives, we shall reconvene to hear the gentleman's testimony. Inspector Gregson? Yes, my lord. I should like to hear from you specifically about events of the pawnbrookery on the day in question. Come to my chambers during the recess. Yes, sir, my lord. Very well. Court is adjourned until 1.40 p.m. Ah... Uh, I wanted to finish this episode in one day, but... I suspect it's gonna run a lot longer than this. So, I'm going to go on ahead and end it here, just because I feel like there's a lot more to happen in this case.
I'm gonna figure out who to raid. Not a lot of people streaming. Yee, thank you all for joining. I'll probably raid someone who's doing the art. second thought I do have one person I'm following who's streaming I'll raid them we're gonna go on ahead and raid Grimlaw's stand um so this is the great Ace Attorney Chronicles halfway part through episode 5 and I feel like it's going to be a long long trial and I do need to rest my mind because I went through a big fucking haze in the start of it where I was struggling to find out the right answer to anything because the two people at the very beginning were difficult to work with and they were so vague but if you want to see various art that I make, memes that I make, or video game clips that I post, I have a Twitter. I also have a Discord server that everyone above the age of 18 is free to join. And with that, we are going to go on ahead and raid Grimlaw Stand. Thank you all for joining me tonight, and I'll see you all next time. Bye!